Hey guys, today we are going to talk about six cards that have gone up in price. And these are definitely cards that are no longer bulk and you should remove them for, from your trade binders or put them in the pile, which is you know, a higher end trade from the bulk trade. So first of all, whenever a card gets unbanned, like Protein Hulk, it goes up a lot in price. Unbannings are not not common they are extremely rare so when a card gets unbanned i literally saw 400 copies of this get eaten in about an hour and a half even the more expensive copies up to the point that this is now being considered a 25 dollar card if you want a copy right now you pay 25 dollars for this card is it worth 25 dollars nope is it worth the original three to four dollars it was pre-spike nope it's somewhere in between, I think it's 10 to $15. It is a card that will see a lot of play in EDH. It is a card that has lots of combos. Essentially, this picks up the combo pieces you need. Uh, that's, that's what it does. It's a combo centric or even without the combo, it's just great value in terms of what you can get out of this card in terms of the power level of EDH. So not a surprise to see this card what is it, a 600, 700% increase in price. Uh, something that if you had stacks of this, you would be very happy. If you have this in your binder, it's time to take him out in your binder and try to trade him away into the hype or maybe even put him back in your ED8 deck. Really good card. It doesn't have, I believe the only printing is Dissension. Someone leave me a comment if that is incorrect. I do not remember this being reprinted. Next, we will talk about a standard card, a card that has been going up, up, up. As you can see from the graph, it is interesting because it's kind of never gone down. The lowest point you could have got it at was when it was released, when it was announced at $1.89. Now it is $12.96. Do I believe it is worth the increase in price? I don't think it's $12.00. Uh, Thirteen dollars, but I do think it is a solid eight to ten dollar card, which is very close. It's closer to the top end than the bottom end of two dollars. And a reason I believe it is a good card. Imagine a Chandra that comes into play, and it deals four damage to a creature, and it deals four damage to a player. Would that card end for five? Would that card see play? Yes, that card would see play. Now that's exactly what I imagine a Chandra to be like, something that would overexert itself, just go all out, eight damage for five mana, and then not be usable until a little later. This card is the definition of aggro. It is going to dominate the FNMs for the first few weeks until people can build a more of a mid rangey or control to stop this type of deck. But as you will see from another card in this list, Red cards are doing very well. All the other Amaket cards are doing extremely poorly. I mean, there is a green card on this list as well. However, this is Glorybringer. I will mention is a game day promo. So there will be eight copies of this at, for the top eight at most stores. And assuming that your store is small, that means there will be a abundance of this rare compared to other rares that are not game day promos. Yes, yes you have to top eight. But my game days, there's only like eight people. So it's not it's not necessarily very difficult to top eight. So this will be a very good card for game day. I think they picked the correct one, although initially it didn't seem that way. The other big announcement is the banning of Sensei's Divining Top. This has deterred the tier one legacy deck called Miracles. Miracles is heavily reliant on that card. And then without the Sensei's Divining Top, you'd have a opening for whatever the next tier one deck is. Now, some people think it's Merfolk. Some people think it's Bug Delver or Shardless Delver, which we will get into a card, Leovolt, which is interesting because it was banned in the EDH, but apparently it's going up in price because people want to play in Legacy, which makes sense because Legacy, it is a four of, and EDH is a one of. So now you have a, the chance for it to be better in a format where you need four of them 
compared to a format where one is just okay. True Name Nemesis, uh, it's been a while since we got the commander deck it was in, Mind Seize. It's very good. I don't see it going too that much down in price. This is just what the natural price growth of True Name Nemesis is. It's been enough, unless they reprint it, right? If they were to reprint it, it would go down significantly. However, Merfolk is something that people are very high on. It is something that may repa replace the Miracle deck. There is a percentage of players who have to play something different now. And there's a percentage of top decks that are no longer Miracle decks. Therefore, something will replace it. The question is, what is it? Huh, is it? It might be... I'm promoting Blue Red Delver because that's what I play. That's one of the only decks I have built up in Legacy. And it's a lot of fun. It's kind of random. But it's burn slash aggro. It's everything I love about uh, Magic in general. So I do love that deck. And we will see what deck replaces Miracles as a top tier deck. Now, when we talk about red cards, red cards from a new set typically spike when the new set is released. And why is this the case? Well, red is more aggro. I know the two cards we looked at are expensive for aggro cards, quotation. However, they are this kind of aggro themed build. So this is a 5-4 with haste. If you don't have, or if you have one or fewer cards in your hand, then you can go ahead and attack with him the turn, or her, I guess it's a her, the turn she comes out. And then next turn, you play out your dragon, and boom, your opponent is probably dead. That is a lot of damage coming at your opponent in one turn. Red is a much stronger color than... It finally is getting the respect. I've always loved red as a color, color, but it's hard to love a color that has been overlooked for a long time. And um, it's nice to see that they have the best god, or questionably the second best god it's the second best in terms of finance we will talk about the green god a little later because he's an interesting example of something that is pushed as a card but it is nice to see that the dragons are not crappy the one promoted dragon that is the iconic card of the theme is not like terrible and the red god is okay it is also splashable I am probably going to make a red deck wins. I have to obviously get the card. I'm probably going to open a box, see what I get, and then from that, from there, decide what I want to build. I'm definitely in favor of buying singles in this set. I typically never say that because I do like opening boxes, and what I do is I buy boxes, and my friends will be able to open them with me, and it's something they enjoy doing. I don't personally enjoy opening packs because... You know, I, I don't know. I just don't like to feel like it's random. I don't like to play a lot. I like going to the casino, which is kind of weird. But in the casino, I mainly play poker and blackjack. And if you optimize your blackjack, you're very close to the house odds. And I always try close. Obviously, you're not perfect for multiple hours if you play. But it comes close enough that I feel like it's just a coin flip, which I'm okay with. Booster packs are more like, ugh, you're just going to lose money. Now, this is an interesting case, a super interesting case that we can talk about in great detail. What happens when a card is banned in one format? It can go up in price. It depends on what's happening with the card. Again, Miracles is gone, and Leovolt is a very strong card. He is OP in the Legacy formats. Making your opponent not draw more than one card is pretty, pretty good as well as you know having punishment abilities where you draw extra cards. So this card has gone up slightly in price, probably from around 45 to 58. 45 to 58 is a big difference, especially given the card was just banned in EDH's. I am surprised to see it go up, but that tells you the strength of the format, right? Leovol is a four of in Legacy, which just because Miracles is gone, that doesn't mean that this deck got any better, uh, or this deck is tier 1 now. It gives it a better chance. However, it, it's, I don't know, like, it's an interesting scenario where it got banned in one format. 
but it went up in price because the other format it is available in needs it as a four of. So there was probably a small dip in price before people realized, hey, wait a second, we still need these, but we now need more copies of them. So Leovolt, interesting card, something that I would highly recommend um, if you still have them or you, you're sitting on Conspiracy 2 boxes. I think it's okay. I mean, yes, a ton of value is dependent on this card or if you pull this card or not. But outside of that, it's okay. Like, it's okay to sit on this card because it is a legacy card. Now, if they abandon a legacy, we would see a huge price drop on this one. So the last card we're going to talk about is the Green God, the most expensive of them, which has done a, exactly a U-turn from the high of 17.5 to the low of 11 back to 17.5. So when we talk about the Green God, I think one thing to know, it's the cheapest of the God, or, or it's very cheap for what it does. It's two and a green for a 5-5 five five Death Touch Indestructible where all you need is a creature with four power greater on turn four. And you can give another target creature plus two plus zero and trample. You cannot give, so I misread this initially, you cannot give it him. You cannot give it plus two plus zero. You have to give another creature that. I think with Death Touch that would be really, really good. It's a constant effect, and if you have mana acceleration, it gets really brutal extremely fast. It's also difficult to remove because it's indestructible. It reminds me a lot of Smuggler's Copter in, in some ways, where you need to play creatures to make it attack, and then once you're done playing the creature to attack, it's hard to remove on your opponent's turn, or near impossible to remove on your opponent's turn, so you just have to keep getting attacked and you have to either throw chump blockers or take a heavy chunk of damage. As a 5-5, five five, this is a huge body in standard right now. We're not dominated by rhinos or just, you know, creatures. The creatures are smaller. They become bigger because of the plus one, plus one counters on them. But they are still not 5-5s five on turn three. So a 5-5 five five indestructible death touch is very, very good. And the fact is getting a creature or power four greater and green is not that difficult, especially if you can pump the creature. So if you just had a two drop, it's a two, two bear. You can pump it turn four and then attack with both. Uh, so I think it's a good card. I don't know if it's 17 and a half dollars, but it is interesting to see this one go up in price mainly because it's never really dropped. So anyway, leave me a comment below what cards you think are good pickups and what cards you think that you, or I guess what cards you have, and if you made any money from these cards. Anyway, that's it guys. Bye.